was actually the one that messaged you on Facebook. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. I told you I wasn't full of shit. Uh, I know, yeah, you are, I swear. Oh, I was like, I'm gonna get a hold of Bill. This is having a great idea. I got it. I was like, this is awesome. I was like, we have to do this. I think it's so cool. For generations, Luigi's Pizza and Fun Center has been an icon of my hometown here in Aurora, Illinois. Essentially, Luigi's was the place to go when you just wanted to have a fun time with some great food, especially with some family and friends. And I honestly don't think there's a person in Aurora who doesn't know what Luigi's is. Which is why their announcement to close was so shocking. Luigi's posted the news to Facebook, which got 1,600 likes and 1,700 shares, which is pretty good for a small business. It truly felt like the end of an era to so many people, including myself. And I found myself trying to take as many pictures and videos as I could during what I thought was going to be my last visit. After looking through what I had documented, I just didn't feel like I was going to remember this place as it truly was. A unicorn of a family-oriented pizza arcade. I wanted to make sure Luigi's is remembered truthfully, so I went to Bill and his staff and I started asking about their history. I'm Bill Posh from Aurora, Illinois. I've lived in Aurora 67 of my 69 years. I'm the fifth owner of Luigi's. Sandy Duncan, she had a sandwich and soup place. And then pizza came around and she was the first one in Aurora to have a pizza place. I was a truck driver for my dad. I was planning on taking over my dad said, you know what, I don't see a future anymore. And he was right. He was in it for 36 years. So I kind of bowed out. And then I was unemployed for six weeks. And then Luigi's Pizza came up. It was a softball buddy of mine. Tommy Thayer said, hey, I got this place, this uh, Luigi's Pizza. I said, what in the world would I do with that? I don't even think Bill called it Luigi's. The lady he brought it from in 1981 was already called Luigi's. I think it's been called Luigi's once they started making pizzas. So where did the name Luigi's Pizza and Fun Center come from? Oh, that came from Sandy Duncan. She just picked a name out, Italian. Yay, you know, Italian. So she did that. And, uh, and that's how Luigi's came about. Well, good. So I, I, mean, I was gonna say, did, did Luigi's have anything, like any significance or it was just a sound of Italian might be recognizable? Sound of Italian. And no, no. No significance from any place of the country. That's all. <laughs> That's good. I was going to say, I'm like, I always think of like, there's got to be some family meeting or something like that. Oh, no. just sound of Italian. Yeah. I know Bill was calling it Luigi's. Yeah, he called it Luigi's. Uh, yeah. When he first purchased it, he thought it was called Luigi's. I'm like, what? Yeah, come by Luigi's Pizza, guys. Come on. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we actually made fun of him. I told my wife, you know what? We are breaking even. I don't know if this is the right mode. Maybe I should look for something. Almost immediately, it was like, God blessed me. The next day, the next week, all of a sudden, I get a call that says, yeah, we want to bring in 83 people. I only had 16, 20 seats, that was it. So people were, were starting to like the product. So I had to look into buying a Blarney Stone over on the west side. Now I'm into liquor. This is the first time we're in liquor. There was no liquor at the first store. So then Luigi's on 732 Prairie came about. Mike Drews from Doss Real Estate said, hey, Billy, why don't you buy that over there? I go, what in the world am I gonna do with 27,000 square feet? I could use another five, but not 27. He asked his son, hey, uh, what were you complaining about? He says, we'd like to have a batting cage, but we're playing dome ball and there's no batting cage to practice. So I looked into it and um, I decided to buy this place. 
and from there, the Ouija's kept growing. Bill began to see the vision in having an arcade, so he started with a small collection of games. Bill became so invested in the idea, he flew to Mexico to learn about a new technology to make his arcade stand out. We only had 28 games when we first started. That's it, 28 games. So Aaron, my game room tech, he and I flew to Guadalajara, Mexico, and they had these DKS keys. We were the very first ones in the United States to have this. And on this key, it told you anything and everything. So if a 10-year-old boy bought something, we know, we kind of know what he likes. So if we run out of prizes, we know what to get. My goal is every kid walk out here with something, a trinket, or they know they got five or 600 tickets saved for a better prize down the road. That's the fun, having a kid win something coming out. And think about when we went to Embed Cards, that they, they, that's their card. It's like their driver's license. That's their personal amount of tickets on that card. And then uh, Embed is paperless, so we switched from the paper tickets. It saved us three employees on Saturdays because we had two employees at all times had to carry rolls of tickets to fill up these games because they're going to run out of tickets. With the success of the arcade, Bill had other ideas to keep growing. Now, most of his revenue was coming from the arcade, so he wanted to invest in the entertainment side of his restaurant. This meant installing a one-of-a-kind laser tag arena. So I got the Lasertron system. And they are so cool. We put in a three level laser tag. Very seldom, there's very few that, I don't even know if there's any in America that have three level. So we put that in to be unique, to be different, and give it a little bit of the Star Wars effect. You're seeing the lasers go back and forth and they were fighting with the lasers. And, and so it was kind of a little bit of Star Wars. So we kind of built it with that theme and it's been successful. When Bill was designing the finishing touches for Luigi's, he always thought about how he could do better than his competitors. In this area, his largest competition came from major corporate chains like Dave & Buster's and Chuck E. Cheese's. The problem with Chuck E. Cheese is when you go there, those bears, that jammery, all the games, the noise you could hear. I said, I want a game room, but I want to eat out in the dining room without hearing the bears coming on or the screaming or the, or the ding, ding, ding of the game. So yeah, Chuck E. Cheese played a little bit the negative side that I didn't like about it. So I uh, said, yeah, let's do it, but we're gonna put windows and doors in there so we don't hear it all the time. Another reason why Luigi stood out was because they were such a large part of the community. You see, there was always a charitable aspect to the business and Bill made sure fundraisers were easily accessible to those who needed them. One of the ones that I really loved doing was fundraisers. So for anybody, for any organization, it had to be a nonprofit. Three years ago, we did 131 fundraisers in one year. That's like every three days we had a fundraiser here. But I like doing that so that everybody can make money for their event. Sometimes it's the Boy Scouts and uh, baseball teams. We do the Lions Club comes in here every other week, the Royal Noons, so they have their meetings here. So. Uh, I, I like helping out. We have union people that come in. So this place, this facility is used in so many different ways. Those are kind of events I like to do. Bill always kept everyone's best interests in mind. He always had been a large part of the community, but more personally, he was a large part of his employees' lives. Are you so committed to the wages that you're even working here past the closing? And what made you stay, especially, especially you? Bill? I picked up a lot of my trade from Bill. He's a very generous man, but a bullshitter. He's a big, bigger bullshitter than generous. He is so much more than just the boss. I just walked in there and I was like, this is my work dad. I'll do anything for him. He's like another dad for me. Bill, you are the man. We are going to miss you. We love you and thank you. The Bill Park. The Bill Park. There was one family in particular Bill impacted most, and they were part of his staff for years. I was out of work for a period of time for a few months. Luigi's has been very good to me. I went through a few things. When I started at Luigi's, I wasn't driving. I was walking back and forth to work. Bill was nice enough to sell me a car while I was working here. Gave me a great deal, so that way I didn't have to walk anymore. Got my license situated. I bought a house. So if Luigi's wasn't closing, I wouldn't be leaving. I suffer from depression and uh, bipolar disorder and nobody else would hire me because of that. 
but he knew what was going on in my head, so he's like, you know what, I know how to deal with it. He was the one person that hired me and actually gave me a job. It was Bill that, in a way, he saved me from myself. We take care We've of been, each other. Yes, we do. We've been here for so long, we understand what's going on, and we just know, like, that what needs to get done. And everybody's cried at least once. Oh, yeah. But, but we're there. Mm -hmm. I've cried here, Nate's cried. Mm -hmm. Everybody's crying here. This place had good memories. Yeah. I think Luigi's is gonna ruin, like, the rest of my job experiences, because this place is just like, it's basically family, it's not like employees. If any of us need, you know, rides or anything, you know, honestly, anything when it comes down to it. Yeah. We're here for each other, you know, like, it, it's literally just, it's a, it's, it's a family restaurant, but the staff is so close, like, it's unbelievable how close we are. I'm scared to look for another job, because I feel that I'm not gonna like it as much as I like it here, you know? It's like, my first job, I've been here for like, a year, so it's like, scary to start over somewhere new. Feels like a more of a family and more mm -hmm. of a connection than I feel like you would get from working at McDonald's or like a corporate job. I think it's been a really enjoyable experience. I've been in and out of pizza restaurants for the past eight years and so far this has been the best tasting and the most family oriented place I've worked. Luigi's tagline was centered around providing family fun. However, something a lot of people didn't recognize was how affordable Bill made the business. He didn't advertise how cheap he was compared to the competition, but instead he worked behind the scenes to make it accessible to as many people as possible. I'm not Disney World, but I want to be better than other places. If somebody could really just do the same thing as I do, but just make sure that it's affordable. I had a mother came over and said, Thank you for doing this. Says, Why? Says, we otherwise we couldn't afford this. This special on Tuesday is the only time we could come out, and my son is having a blast. I just I melted a little bit, and because I didn't I didn't really know, so and I didn't know how important this was to other people. You don't see me driving a Corvette, but I'm putting it in Hungry Hippo. I'm putting it in SpongeBob. I'm putting them into games like that. You know, Hungry Hippo was twenty six thousand dollars, but. It, the fun that people are having a Hungry Hippo. I just want things to be fun here. And that's why the word fun center is at the, at the end of the, the phrase, Luigi's Pizza and Fun Center. In order to offer prices the way they were, Bill had to make sure he was constantly making sales. And while we generally remember the positives Luigi's brought, they had faced a lot of negatives in order to keep their doors open. I've been in three recessions. And uh, now we had the COVID one. When we first opened up here, we made so much money, it was ridiculous. And then when the Twin Towers went down, everything changed. It was really, really kind of, kind of a sad time in life. So everything was going pretty good until the housing problems and stuff like that. When you have a housing crunch there and businesses were starting to lay off, you know, people just tightened up. They said, you know what, uh, we don't have to have pizza. We don't have to do the game room and arcades and all that. And then it kind of broke up after about four or five years. Things were pretty good then. As many recessions and other problems that the country has faced, we faced them head on. Riots, 9-11, uh, other stuff, you know, that was stuff that we don't think will happen. February 15th, 2019 will stand as a horrific date in Aurora's history. The Henry Pratt Warehouse, which was across the street from Luigi's, had fired an employee who then had a violent reaction. Well, at first, there was, a, there was 11 ambulances lined up in a horseshoe. And then there were some fire trucks here. And I thought they were doing a practice excursion about something. And then when I saw the SWAT guys in their armored vest, then I said, oh, it must be a drug bust. And then it was about a half hour later, a policeman came in and said, hey, this place is locked down. Nobody comes in and nobody leaves. But we didn't know anything of what was going on. All we heard was active shooter. And also I see them all in front of Luigi's in the street. And the street is, they, there are three to four cars lined up across the street from me. And they're all ready. They, they had their vests on and stuff like that. And I didn't know where the shooting was happening. They said Henry Pratt. There had to be about 150, 180 people working over there. There was five people that got shot to death from the shooter. Shooter got shot then. But I didn't know the deaths were there until the nine o'clock news that night. It was a little scary plus just a little nerve wracking just because it was right across the street. He didn't want to lock any doors. We literally didn't shut down until the police came and 
took over the building. All those officers from this site and over on Highland Avenue, they all came in. They congregated here, but they went through where the shooting was. Did you see him? What did he say? You know, uh, what was his attitude like? They interrogated somebody in here, in that room, in that room, and that room over there. So anyway, all my, three of my kids came in and they made pizzas. The last time I heard, they were at 125. Julie, my daughter, said, Dad, we couldn't keep count. When everything unfolded, they brought everybody here. You have all the law enforcement, um, everybody. Uh, they were feeding all the police officers. They were feeding everybody. Anybody who came inside? Anybody that came inside. You didn't charge for that. Absolutely not. <laughs> Look what they were doing. They, they, they gave up their day to help save people's lives. You know, so, no, I couldn't do that. When we had Pratt right over there, they let that turn into a, they turned this place into a mobile command center. We were making pizzas and things. Left for and it. right, free pizzas for all the for all the cops and everything just to help out them. Where over 300 people were in this building at the same time. I just sat back and said, those people could have been at a birthday party for their kids. They could have been somewhere celebrating. And they dropped everything to come and save a life. They don't know who these people are. They don't know who they're protecting. We're so well protected, we just don't know that. So five weeks later, I decided to close on a Sunday and celebrate them. It was responders day here from 11 to 8 p.m. So when my wife and my kids finally were able to come, some of the employees brought my daughters and sent them straight to the, to the arcade. And to me, that meant so much because, you know, obviously I don't want my daughters to be uh, surrounded by what had happened. So ever since, I've been, we've been coming here. It was a heck of a day and a heck of a time. And uh, we got over it, but I'm so sorry those five people lost their lives for no reason. After their involvement with Henry Pratt, the respect people had for Luigi's grew exponentially. Things were going extremely well, but it was short-lived until COVID brought things to a stop. Oh my gosh. When we get told to cut, you got to shut down and then you got told, well, you can only do pickup and delivery. When you're told all this, you're doing, you know, just like it or not, this is what's happening. We know better. So we only did 18% of our total business. Here's the problem. We had no revenue from the game room, no revenue from the latest day, no revenue from the bar. Well, guess what? We still had to pay for the fees, for the arcade fees, and for the license for the bar, you know, for the feds and for the state. But we have no revenue coming in. Are you kidding me? Why are you charging us? We did have a scare during COVID where we were going to close too. And then people started calling and placing orders just to come pick up even. So that really helped. COVID was, it kind of brought us together more, but it was kind of difficult on a lot of us. I was part of the skeleton crew where you'd maybe have two or three people in the building at once. Um, absolutely miserable. They still were working. That's the whole thing. We cleaned anything and everything, but we had to show them how to do that. We we cleaned the walls, we cleaned the ceilings, we cleaned the, the sprinkler heads. We went around and cleaned every single one of them and all that. He had to be very diligent about it, but we did it. We kind of just renovated the whole place, trying to make it look better for when COVID eventually would end. So. We had to think outside the box, so we came up with pizza kits. That's what saved our butts. But it was fun. It was a family thing to do. And since we were all kind of told to stay home or stay away from other people, it was a great family venture to do. It was a hit. And then when we came out with new ones, oh, people are still buying them, you know. Now, was it enough to keep going? Absolutely not. We almost closed down January 4th of 2021 because we were $73,000 behind with unemployment, with the state taxes, with the Fed, with the, the city of Aurora taxes. We got a grant, 100,000. I only thought it was gonna be 25, but we got 100,000, 73,800 went out the next day. And then I had just enough money for 21,000 for our payroll. So basically 100,000 went out in 24 hours. It, but I'm thankful we got through it. A lot of people, think you didn't survive COVID. That's actually the general consensus going We bounced around. back after uh, counted COVID, and that's what he told. 
the managers at a management meeting. January of last year is was kind of rough. Towards mid-January, he bounced back. It, it bounced back. It bounced back hard, he said. And he was good. The impacts of COVID-19 almost made Bill close, but the loyalty he built over the years helped him stay in business. He clearly had a strong presence, so I wanted to find out how much he's impacted others like he had with myself. So uh, I've been coming here uh, ever since I was really little. Ever, basically ever since I've been like pissing my pants. <laughs> we are here for Evan and Karina's wedding, where this is Karina's hometown. A lot of fond memories here. We've been coming here since we were kids. I think we've each gone to at least a dozen birthday parties here. So. A lot of great memories in this place, and sad to see it go. It's a great place, you know. Uh, I've been going here for my birthday parties, you know. It's just, uh, it's he was born. He's yes. every single birthday party. Oh, wow. I'm going to be real honest with you. This was my first time. We just moved to uh, the area, but it was amazing. Yes. We're going to miss it. We We've been coming here for years. How many years? Oh, you're old. Back in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, for years. Like back on New York for no, I used to go to the one on the east side. That's the one on the east side. I'm going to do this. 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 i am I don't know, we're gonna miss it. This place is awesome though, and I'm sad to see them go, but thank you for the good times. Yeah, it makes me feel like real comfortable. Like, I'm a very like introverted person, but it's like, when I'm here, it's like, I feel like everybody's just like real cool and mellow. Hi, hi, Lady Tag was fun. Hi, hi, I'm, I always lost. I'm from, I'm going to six grade. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Norway. I came here just to be here for the last days. We love Luigi's. I've been here since a kid. I will forever, there will be a place for Luigi's in my heart. I will never forget this place, ever. We were celebrating a 92-year-old birthday today. And then also, we heard it was the last day, so we were excited to have the pizza one last time and see some family. Yeah, it's just so sad to see him close them. We've been coming yeah. here since we were kids, so. Well, thank you. We just throw the baseball fundraisers. I have a 24 Royal Superstars, and we live here. I mean, our kids grew up through here. We're gonna miss it. Best of wishes. Au revoir. See you soon. <laughs> After beating everything from recessions to COVID, Luigi's had a very strong year ahead. That's why when they announced they were closing, it felt really sudden. What made you announce the closure of Luigi's? It was approximately nine weeks ago that we were in the office and my management said this person's leaving, this person's leaving, that person leaving. Just don't have enough people. We had about seven people leave in one week and then couple of our managers that were left, they were leaving after June. Seven of my high school, college kids came in in six days and gave me their two-week notice. But we've been 15, 20 people understaffed, and we've been trying. We tried with Indeed, Recruit, Zip Recruit. We've been trying all this, and it's just not getting much. Were you planning on closing Luigi's for a while? No. <laughs> this came up just nine weeks ago. So when my management and I got in there and we started shedding tears in the office, there was no other option because there was no other people, no key people to work here. I wouldn't be closing if I had work. Made it through three recessions and COVID. You heard me say that, but I'm closing because of lack of help. How did you react when Luigi's announced that they were closing? I, I teared, I cried. I still do. It's a, uh, like I said, it's home. I was shocked, utterly shocked. With me, I admit I was a little bit more emotional. When I found out Luigi's was closing, I was heartbroken.
Yeah, I didn't really believe it. Like, it didn't really sink in. It still hasn't really mm -hmm. sunk in. I don't think it will sink in until like the last day. And they told me Luigi's closing and I really thought they were pranking me. I thought I thought they were just lying about the entire thing. I was like, you guys are playing around, you know? I cried because I didn't know what else to do. And I, on my way to work, I cried. Mm -hmm. And I cry, I've cried several more times since then. And I probably, on the last day, cry some more. Yep. I was in the office when he told the three of the morning managers and we all sat there and cried. It's like a family here. I hold Luigi's dear. And I don't want to leave, but, you know, all good things come to an end. We as the managers in the meeting figured that something like this was going to happen. We just didn't expect it that soon. But it was just a shock to everybody. How many days did it take for you and your management to decide that you it was it was time to close the meetings. Approximately ten days. Yeah, it was it was pretty sudden. It really was. So the sad news is, we, one of the girls says, "You know, I hate to say this, but you know what, Bill, you might about think about closing." And she was right on the dime, right there. So then we said, "Okay, let's do it." Probably some of the worst news I've ever received in my life, and it was so sudden too, because we had plans. We're buying new games. We literally Num just bought three new games to play like the numbers, a month and a half before. The numbers were great for the year, and uh, it was just unexpected. And June is our slowest month, and you can already tell by mid-January that June was going to be kind of a record June. We're having a record year. <laughs> oh my gosh. January through March was the greatest start that we ever had. A couple Fridays ago, we just the kitchen alone did fifteen thousand dollars in sales, and we didn't have the staff for it, but we, we did. A two weekends ago was our second best weekend that we ever had, and five weeks before that, that weekend was our best weekend we ever had. Why are we closing? But I'm at my age, and it is time to retire. So. I will do that. I think the good Lord has a path for me somewhere, someplace, somehow, and I'm going to I'm going to use it. And this is the time to do it. Working here, I have met some of them, the most amazing people I have ever met in my life. I have met some of my best friends here. I'm just thankful for the opportunity and all the people I've met working here at Luigi's, all the life lessons I've learned, the fun I've had, the kids I've made happy. Well, I just want to say, first off, thank you to all the customers, anyone watching this video, you for helping us out, of course, in doing this. And <laughs> love you guys. Uh, Luigi's lives on in our memories. I think I would have to thank Bill for hiring me. So I owe him a lot. I owe him a lot. So it's been great here. to medium to a nice size place. There's been a lot of memories here, a lot of good times. We've given many good times to a lot of people. And you can't do it without employees, and you gotta have those kind of people to help out, you know? And uh, I just, I'm just so blessed to have what I have, and I've been so blessed to have this building like it is, to use it like it is, and it's a memory. So we're, we're going to leave, and I'm going to go memories. out, and I'm not happy about it, but you know what? After tonight, I'm going to look forward to it, yes. okay? Yeah. Yeah.